Are you sitting in a space where you are struggling with anxiety? Do you feel like a prisoner to the cycles of depression? Do you feel stuck in your own life and feel frustrated and lost, but yet you know there is so much more on the other side of this mental breakdown? I want to hold your hand through this therapeutic life healing journey. I will help you navigate emotional healing, spiritual growth, and taking massive action so you can align your mind, body, and spirit to completely transforming your life. You are worthy of the life of your dreams, of stepping into your power and experiencing your breakdown as your breakthrough. Hey, I'm Adi. I'm your therapist, your coach, your mentor. Join me as we heal your life together. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for spending time with me today in this episode. I'm going to be interviewing an incredible friend of mine who is also a professor and an author, and we're going to dive into soul care versus self-care when it comes to racial battle fatigue. Janet Stickman is an amazing, incredible woman that I cannot wait for you all to meet. Her story is so inspiring, so moving, and very relatable. Wherever you are in your healing journey, I believe that you will find yourself in some part of her story and be able to be inspired by her raw storytelling and incredible experience of how she really moved from self-care to soul care and how that invited more play, more fun into her life. And I hope and I wish the same for you in your healing journey, friend. Before we dive in, I just want to say thank you. I see you tuning in from United Kingdom and Canada, Sweden, Malaysia, Out in Australia, New Zealand, Taiwan, Germany and Kenya, Spain and Italy, Mexico, Philippines, Portugal, South Africa, and tons of friends out in the United States. We got California, Wyoming, Texas, Illinois, Florida, New York, North Carolina. I see you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please do share this episode with your friends, your family. Let them know about this podcast. Please subscribe, leave a review. This will help to reach other women around the world who are in need of support along their healing journey. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now let's get ready to dive into today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Therapeutic Life Healing for Women with Adit. I am so excited to introduce my dear friend, Janet Stickman, who is a professor of humanities who specializes in ethnic studies out here in California and is also the author of Two Black Parents Visiting Earth. Thank you so much, Janet, for being here. I'm excited about our topic. We're going to be diving into the conversation of soul care versus self-care to combat racial battle fatigue. Janet, welcome to the podcast. So glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adit, for having me on your program. Really excited to be here. I would love listeners to get to know a little bit about you, Janet, your work, and who you are and just any fun facts you'd like to share with us. So I'll pass it to you to share a little bit about you. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, again, my name is Janet Stickman. I am, uh, I've been a professor of ethnic studies for about 15 years. I've been a writer for about 20, um, started writing, um, uh, started writing spoken word and that, um, was a place where I could really embrace all aspects of, of who I am. Um, I identify as Black Abina, and so poetry was a way for me to really um, embrace all sides of, of my identity, being Black, being Filipina, um, and and also growing up without parents. Um, I think that that jump from spoken word to then my, my memoir, um, that was around 2004. So that was an opportunity for me to like really um, sit with some some, uh, deep things when it came to where I am as an adult and how I got there and and who uh, has been an incredible presence in my life that kind of sustained me. So that's the short version. 
I love that. Thank you so much for sharing, Janet. And I know that you have a soul care program out and maybe sharing a little bit about what that is, how that got inspired. Sure, sure. Yeah, so I have a a five-week program that's uh, in progress right now, and it's called uh, Soul Care Power, uh, Creating Rituals to Help Heal Your Racial Battle Fatigue. And um, it is something that was born out of my experience um, trying to heal from racial battle fatigue. Um, I was trying to, I was addressing a lot of, you know, racial microaggressions and not so microaggressions, uh, whether it be in the workplace or um, in uh, dealing with, uh, you know, my daughter's um, schooling, um, as well as all these other areas within my life and um, learning how much it was taking a toll on my my emotional and, and physical health. And so I was thinking, I think early on before this even became a program or before I even began gathering the courage to write about it, I was just trying to sleep. (laughs) I was just trying to sleep and not have headaches. And I was wondering, you know, why, why was I having these chronic headaches? Why was my heart pounding all the time? Why was I having these chest pains? Why was I waking up at three o'clock in the morning trying Mm. to you know, solve problems and figure out my to-do list. I mean, it was just, it was, it was kind of insane. And um, I remember, I think it was uh, 2016, I had gone to the, uh, the, the ER and they had done all these different tests on me and everything was, was fine. And I talked to the, the doctor, I said, well, you know, I'm glad physically all my organs, blood pressure, everything is, is, is normal. You know, what do you think, you know, what does, what do these issues, what can they be attributed to? And he looked at me and said, uh, so how's work? And I just, I started crying. (laughs) I just, I wept and, and he just, he just sat there and held space. Um, and he didn't say anything like, well, there's your, you know, there's your answer. But in my head, that, that was my answer. Um, and there, you know, there are ways in which your, your, your body tries to give you signals. It doesn't, it doesn't lie. And if something is like grating against your soul, grating against your spirit, your, your body and mind has a way of saying, no, not today. We're not doing this anymore. (laughs) Um, you need to rest, you need to take care of yourself. And, 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 uh, I think those were, were the signals. And I'll never forget um, being uh, connected to a couple of folks thereafter, particularly my my primary care doctor. And this was a totally different primary care doctor that I, in in comparison to the one that I had maybe about a year uh, prior. And he says, uh, he asked me all these different questions and uh, basically asked me, so what do you do for fun? And and I- I didn't know how to, it was funny. I didn't know how to answer that. And I always perceive myself as someone who is fun, who loves having fun, you know, that I'm a fun person, all these, you know, and he posed me, he posed the question to me and I didn't know how to answer it. And, um, and so that became my homework at following the, the conversation. He said, you know, um, what I'd like you to do this week is to do something fun. And so um, he, he prescribed fun as if they were, you know, vitamins or, you know, some pills, some, you know, pills to get at the pharmacy. He was just like, yeah, that's what you need to do. And, and so I did. And that was the beginning of, I, I think um, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things that you kind of know on an intellectual level, but then you know, when you invest so much time in work, whether it's work at the workplace or work that you're doing at home or work for, you know, uh, you know, our children or or whatever it may be, you kind of lose sight. Sometimes you lose sight of what brings you joy. And sometimes you lose, lose sight to the point where when you try to do things, you think you enjoy, it feels uncomfortable. And that was deep for me. You know, I enjoy walks. And I remember going up to that week, I remember going up to Mount Tamalpais and, and, uh, and feeling uncomfortable. 
I was like, this feels weird. It took me a while. You know how everything gives off its vibration and, and yeah. you know, and we're, you know, when we're real tense and stressed out and run, running, running uh, back and forth and doing all these different things. Sometimes it takes a wait, takes a time to adjust our pace to the pace of nature. And mm-hmm. I think that was where, where I was at. I think I really, it was a, it was a definitely a, a reality check. Wow, Janet, I bet so many people are nodding their heads, just relating to so many parts of that story, that lived experience you had, because, you know, between feeling fatigued at work, overwhelmed, and not maybe even know it until someone asks, how's work? And then you just start sobbing and you're like, whoa, I didn't even know it was having this much of an impact on me. And then to just go off of what you just said about joy and fun. And, you know, I would imagine a lot of folks listening also pride themselves in feeling like they have a fun personality or they know what lights them up or what brings them joy. And maybe even particularly this year, it's been very challenging or previous years, it's been challenging. And to remember the joy or the fun and, and almost what can feel scary that I hear people say, and I've experienced myself is who am I? What happened to me? I, I I don't even feel connected to myself anymore. Um, feeling like disconnected from your joy, feeling disconnected from parts of yourself that had fun doing certain things. And that can be a very frightening feeling. So how did you work through that? And what was your experience like just kind of just rediscovering your, your fun side, but also what was it like for you to, you know, notice that it was likely probably very scary too, that Mm -hmm. you felt disconnected from that side of yourself that you used to once know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I like how you put that, Adit. And, you know, this whole thing of, you know, arriving at a place in your life where you no longer recognize yourself. It's, it's really scary when you think, you know, you think you would know yourself at all times, but when you reach that point in your life where you're like, how did I get here? (laughs) How did I get here? Um, The things that used to work don't seem to fit anymore. So it seems like I have to come up with new things that satisfy me or that bring bring uh, life to me, uh, bring some energy to my step. I think when I first started to figure out how much mending I needed to do, I had to first begin with what was familiar, what what I remember did bring me joy. So those walks, you know, in nature and and I I found that, you know, even though I had loved and and still do to a certain degree, I love walking around in in the redwoods um and you know, wherever there are trees, I'm 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 there. And then I realized, you know, I'm not I like it, but maybe walking somewhere else might bring me, you know, more peace or more joy. And so I found myself tweaking it a bit and, you know, going to the beach. And so that has been something that has brought me more peace and more, more, um, it gives me an opportunity to let my mind wander. I think that was really what I needed. I needed to allow my mind to wander. I needed a chance to daydream. Uh, I think with the, you know, just that small tweak of walking in the woods to walking along the shore, I was realizing, okay, what are some other things that, that I enjoy? This is, I've noticed, I had to practice noticing that this is, that I get a certain feeling from this that I like. I mean, and which <laughs> even when I say it, it sounds really, really basic. But like, I think for many of us, when we're in a place of pain, we kind of have to go back to something that basic, like, okay, I'm going to do this. This makes me feel good. You know, (laughs) it sounds, you know, like a, like a Dr. Seuss book, but like, but at the end of the day, that's, if I'm honest, that's kind of where I was at in those early stages of trying to heal. And then it later progressed to you know, you know, I definitely knew that I enjoyed swimming. So I just continued uh, doing that. But then it, it progressed to, you know, just being curious, 
and, uh, you know, tapping into those things that, you know, I, I, are, I, I enjoy, or I would like to try that I think I might enjoy, but I'm really not sure how it's going to turn out. Um, and so that's, that's something uh, that I think I learned during the, the pandemic, just kind of letting my curiosity lead me. And, you know, luckily, you know, given the circumstances, I was still able to work from home. Um, I think given the, the global, it seemed, I think since the world had shut down, literally, uh, everyone was, or there was an opportunity to kind of self-reflect and examine whether or not it is even good for us to be running and ripping every single minute, every single hour of the day. And I felt like a certain uh, forgiveness that people were having for each other. Uh, and I experienced that for myself as well, that I finally was being self-forgiving in a way that I had not, that I had not been. And um, as far as the risk taking, um, you know, I had decided to sign up for a, a donut making workshop in at a donut spot in London, uh, Bread Ahead. It was a, last last year. The the family and I we went to London for the first time and um, found this this donut spot. And ever since we've been you know daydreaming about that first bite. And I was like, hey, you know why not just give it a try? And <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was the hardest. I mean, it was a two day endeavor. It it was one of the hardest things I had ever done. But you know, there were 114 of us on the Zoom call with this master baker, um, and it, it it was something so I I I've never I've never tried to make a donut, <laughs> you know, and and it came out right on the third try. The first two attempts were just terrible. And, you know, my husband and daughter, they were my guinea pigs. I'm like, here, try this, here, try, this. <laughs> try this. And, you know, and my husband, Sean, he was just, he was so, he was so sweet about it, knowing that those first two batches were not, were not good. They were not <laughs> right. Um, but when that third one hit, you know, they were, Oh, you know, the, the looks on their faces. And it was something that, that really touched me. You know, it really, it really touched me that, I mean, one engaging in that act was, it was a, a low stakes risk and no, no, no lives were at stake, which was a stark contrast from, you know, how I perceive my daily job or my daily work that, you know, one misstep means that all of my students can be confused or, you know, or not even just confused, you know, with me teaching, you know, ethnic studies, a lot of them are looking for answers to how they can deepen their relationships across racial lines, across gender and sexuality lines, across, you know, all these different, you know, um, boundaries. And, um, or social categories. And, you know, with each day that goes by, I welcome it. I'm like, I'm ready. I know what to do. I got that, you know, I've been doing it for a while. But I think even for those of us who are good at what we do, um, we, we, need, a, we need a break. Uh, we need a, a moment to just stop and kind of play a little bit. We, we need to play. Um, not everything has to have such, not everything has to uh, be so um, laden with uh, results, um, with, with outcomes. And, uh, and, and that's hard to do because so many of us kind of draw our confidence from how productive we are or how efficient we are. And, you know, if we're not efficient, whether it is, you know, to our own standards or, you know, to our boss's standards or what have you, then there are some serious consequences. And, you know, I'm one that, you know, every, pretty much in every area of my life, you know, I've been subject to evaluation. And so, you know, when it came to the donut workshop or, you know, I, I started doing parkour uh, a couple years back, you know, these were areas of my life where I finally didn't have to, I wasn't subject to anyone's evaluation. You know, I can just go and play. And I think that was 
it was important to me in a way that I didn't I didn't realize how important it would be. You know how sometimes you'll you'll do things and it's only after the fact that you realize it was good for you, but you yeah. you tried it out, you're like, okay, we'll see how this goes. And then you do it and you're like, whoa, I'm glad I did that. You know? Um, and so I've had, you know, I'm blessed to say that I've had quite a few of those those experiences in a row for me to like be okay with these these you know little opportunities to to take risks and and learn and and grow and um you know I I I feel I feel good I feel good you know even though we've you know we've returned to to work um and though I I even I question if the work really ever ended <laughs> but you know in a formal sense you know we returned in the fall and and uh, a lot of different opportunities have come, especially in light of, you know, this global um, reckoning that people are having around um, uh, race and anti-Blackness and, and things like that. That means there's a lot more demand for the type of work that I do. And nonetheless, I, I've been able to take what I've learned over the last few years in terms of healing and then take what I've learned uh, on fast forward mode um, or turbo mode uh, during the pandemic and take all those tools and apply it to where I am now. Um, and it's, it's been great. Just love all the storytelling because there's so many parts of it that I imagine folks are, are resonating with Janet and, and what I hear really come through from just the, between the donut uh, making and the, parkour it's just there's a sense of um a personal freedom th that really comes through that's what you said was so starking about not attaching it to being a subject to someone else's opinion or evaluation like you said of you and 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 so there's so much freedom that comes with being able to then just let yourself play and and discover parts of yourself or rediscover parts of yourself again. And then it takes you out of that place of like feeling like, whoa, I didn't know myself and, or I lost parts of myself because of work or because of the, the world we live in. And for anyone listening who has experienced microaggressions or is experiencing, maybe resonating from hearing a little bit from you about racial battle fatigue and, and symptoms of that in their body and their life. Um, how do, how do you differentiate between the soul care, which is what you were doing versus self-care? We hear about self-care all the time and, you know, in some ways it's lost its meaning. So I, I love that this, there's this, uh, you really kind of coined this soul care versus self-care and how would one begin to even work, you know, go down that uh, soul care path if they're beginning to feel the racial battle fatigue for themselves. Maybe they're experiencing microaggressions. Maybe they're like having aha moments as they're listening to your story. What would you say to them? I would say, I would say first begin with the self-care and then move on to the soul care. And I guess the way I distinguish between the two um, and you know, with regards to self-care, you know, I started writing about this in, in my um, Midnight Peaches, Two O'Clock Patients book. Um, and I, I wrote this piece called um, A Perfect Ordinary Day. And this is where I was toying around with, you know, how do we get out when we feel stuck and when we feel, you know, the, the sense of stagnancy, what do we do? And it's, you know, when I think of self-care, I often associate it with the basics of, eating healthy food, uh, exercising regularly and getting rest, um, whether it's, you know, sleeping your eight hours or just, you know, making sure that you weave leisurely, you know, activities into your day or into your week. And I think that really, you know, as much as self-care has become a buzzword, um, you know, these days, I, I find that to be like a, a bare necessity, that that's like the bare minimum that we really truly should be doing. But if we move, if we shift ourselves into soul care, this is where we um, do all of those things. We're eating healthy, we're, we're exercising regularly, et cetera, et cetera. 
but we're really paying attention to what we feed ourselves emotionally, physically, spiritually, and um, tapping, making sure that more of our time is spent engaging in things that bring us joy, as opposed to things that just weigh us down and simply feel like work. And you know, this is where I, you know, came up with this this whole idea of soul care power and that that PWR is, you know, play to work ratio. You know, what does it mean to make sure that, you know, throughout the week you're engaging in more play than work? And um, I remember I was I was a part of a, a a book club and you know when when talking to my husband and and sharing in this book club and sharing with you know, my small group of friends, I found myself always saying that, you know, saying, well, you know, the play to play to work ratio feels just right. And, (laughs) and I didn't, I didn't realize it was going to find its way into ultimately a course that I was going to, to um, create. And, um, and, but it just, it fit, It, it made sense to me because, um, you know, whether it was, the, the donuts or, you know, parkour or taking walks and, oh, painting miniatures. That was something else that I started. I love that. <laughs> so creative. So many fun things you found. <laughs> and I, 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 it was a chance for me. I've noticed my, my mind was just kind of relaxing and letting go. And there was no you know, it's my, my perfectionist overachiever, you know, mind had a chance to, to rest and, and be forgiving that that has been a running theme throughout all this mm-hmm. stuff. Self-forgiveness, um, being okay with the mistakes that I make, being okay with the flaws that I have, that I, I've been too hard on myself. And I am among the you know, so many people who, you know, often are so very hard on themselves um, because, you know, for a variety of reasons, whether it be, you know, uh, because we want to make sure we're providing for our family or we want to make sure we make our family and friends proud or or, or we have certain standards that, that we want to uphold. And sometimes we think, you know, I, I, I can't do this with anybody else. I got to do this all on my own because I'm the only one who, who knows exactly how I want this to turn out. And, you know, all these things may be true, but uh, sometimes, you know, it doesn't allow much room for error. And then when the, when the errors come, you know, I'll speak for myself personally, when, when the, when there are mistakes that are, are, that, that arise, you know, I find myself getting real bent out of shape. And, and, and I just found, at, you know, at a certain point, it just wasn't healthy. It wasn't, it wasn't health, healthy to live like that. I needed to be able to laugh at my flaws. And, and, uh, and I think, you know, all these different things from being able to fall and, and stumble and, and hit my shins and in, in parkour to, you know, those first two batches of donuts coming out, like, I don't know, some kind of, you know, biological weapon, you know, it just it, 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 all these different, and then painting, having it not come out right the first few, you know, first few times, I think it was really important for my, my healing, for my development. Um, to look at it and go, this isn't perfect. That's fine. You know, (laughs) that's fine. And be able to laugh at myself too. I think there was a certain point in my life where I had a very difficult time laughing um, at myself when I would make a mistake. And I, and I think it goes back to, I was preparing for my, my second class um, for this program tomorrow and, you know, getting into negativity bias, negativity bias of the brain and and, you know, before I became familiar with that term, I didn't realize what, what was happening in my head. You know, I, you know, why was I zeroing in on that one thing out of everything that went right? Why was I zeroing in on that one thing that went wrong? And it was like, I couldn't let go of it. And, and over the years, it's just, I noticed that it would get worse. And so that's when I started, you know, really learning more about neuroscience, checking out the work of, you know, 
the likes of Rick Hansen or Mark Waldman and um, Barbara Larave and, and you know and a whole host of of other folks um, that uh, especially when it comes to concepts of abundance. Uh, I think uh, Lisa Nichols and uh, Michael Bernard Beckwith uh, have have really had a, a huge influence on my life. Uh, Mario Martinez, when it comes to biocognition, you know, all these different folks. I started to, I, I, I don't think I set out to study neuroscience and abundance, uh, not those concepts per se, but like, as I started to look at all the books that were in front of me, I saw this running theme. And I thought, okay, this is this is uh, where where my mind and heart is at right now. I'm 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 searching for something, searching for some kind of meaning, uh, and and I think I'm think I'm beginning to find it. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's uh, it, it was kind of beautiful to see all of it unfold um, because I think often at times we like to think that. You know, we have a goal in mind. We're going to go out and, you know, go get it. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to, you know, accomplish that goal. And, and uh, there was a lot of murkiness in terms of what direction I had an idea that I wanted to, to, to play. I had an idea that about the certain things I was curious about, you know, I, I would listen to certain things on the radio or, you know, on a podcast, my ears would perk up that sounds good. You know, pull it up on Amazon, buy the book. It's in front of me. I read it. And then next thing you know, I have all these books or all these podca- podcasts and radio, you know, programs that I'm listening to. And there's this running theme. And I thought, okay, um, this is, this is telling me something. What is it telling me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Janet. There's so many parts of everything you shared with the ways that we just like stick to like that almost like a broken record in our mind with there's something negative that someone has said or or we took it as you know um that or or like we you know you'd been saying like it, even a microaggression or you know something being played back over and over and how exhausting it is and then when we, when we can easily slip into thinking something is wrong with us so what I love about what you're saying is is really inviting in the forgiveness and the self-compassion through fun and play and, and how that, you know, the self-care is like the maintenance part, like, you know, just kind of have to at this point because the world we live in is, is just, it's, it's overstimulating. And so you kind of have to pay attention to how to maintain yourself to stay present and sane in a world that's chaotic. Um, And then what you're saying is go deeper and and in another level, especially for folks who identify from the black indigenous people of color community who oftentimes are constantly bombarded um, with another layer of exhaustion in living in a world that is just by default, very racist colonization of almost every field. And so you're gonna, you know, have to take self care to a soul care level um, for for you to be able to find that personal freedom to tap into forgiveness to tap into self compassion. And what I hear you say is is that soul care is all connected to fun and play. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It's most certainly connection connected to fun and play. And mm. and um, I think you know when you were talking about um, self compassion. That most certainly is is uh, has been a running theme, but it's also become foundational when it comes to to this work of um, soul care power. And um, I think that you know when we engage in this commitment to taking care of our souls and and being um, self compassionate, you know we we can't do it alone. Most certainly we need to be surrounded by our loved ones. And that was something, you know, during our first week, um, I encouraged uh, the participants to do that. You know, one of our assignments was to, you know, bring a photo of your loved ones um, because they'll be accompanying you on this journey. Um, Bring some photos of, of your ancestors because uh, they'll be accompanying you on this journey. And I think, you know, this is this is something that I most certainly have found to be uh, real in 
my own life um, that though my parents passed away when I was a teenager, you know, I, it's, it's, it's been so incredibly apparent that they have never left me. <laughs> you know, my mom died when I was 15. My dad died when I was 19. And, um, and, you know, I, by no means do I want to paint uh, a picture of it being easy because most certainly it wasn't. And I would have preferred to have them here with me all these years, but, you know, circumstances being as they were, you know, they both passed uh, early in my life. But when I look at um, my success in higher education, um, in, in getting you know, being able to, to, to obtain all these degrees and then be able to teach as a high school teacher and then to, you know, teach as a college professor. And then, you know, having my husband, us having our daughter and the beautiful friends. Uh, I, I, I must say that I have more, it, when I stop and think about my, my friends and my mentors and, and all these different blessings, I, the, the good most certainly outweighs the bad. Um, I mean, down to I uh, even, you know, all the, the the recent things, recent encounters, whether it be virtual or otherwise, they've all been, I'd say they've mostly been <laughs> really, really good. And I could, if I look back on things, it's given me much opportunity to be, you know, much reason to be grateful because it's it's very possible all those people that I have met along the way, they could have been so incredibly toxic. They could have been so soul damaging. They could have damaged everything in my, in my life. And when I look at other people's lives, um, you know, I, I, I must say I've, I've, I've have not had, I've, ex I've been experiencing quite a bit of um, protection, if you will, um, if for, for lack of a better term. Um, if if I go a little bit deeper, um, I know that the foundation that my parents had provided me with, uh, in terms of love, uh, in terms of the the attention that they gave me, the different lessons that they shared with me, they had left behind lessons for me uh, that allow me to recognize good when I come in contact with it. I think that has been the basic ingredient um, that. Because early on, I had so many experiences of good and of love and all these sorts of things that in their absence, I'm able to recognize good when it crosses my path. And I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm going to cling to that. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I think in that way, I've been quite fortunate um, that my, 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 my set of circumstances uh, you know, prior to my parents passing, uh, was, it was enriching, was, was positive. Um, uh, it, it, it was, they sowed some seeds in me that, that grew. Um, and it, it was definitely cultivated by all the people I ended up meeting along the way to adulthood, <laughs> um, and continued to be cultivated, you know, by, my my parents you know uh presence you know their their spirit still walking with me so inspiring janet just hearing kind of the ancestral medicine that you bring into the soul care and how your parents have just are continuously uh, the lessons that they sowed in you it's, it's so evident that they're alive through your life and you know, the gratitude perspective of, uh, you know, uh, it makes it, it just is just so clear that you're present in life through this lens of gratitude. And, and you kind of rediscovered all of that through this play, through this fun, uh, that you per gave yourself permission to go and, you know, on an adventure to discover, um, and that now, you know, I, 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 you're giving and serving back to folks through your soul care program. And I think, when I um, heard this once and I, uh, this quote, and I think it's so perfect for, for you is when you think of a hero, it's someone who was able to heal their own wounds and then teach others to do the same. And that mm -hmm. is exactly what you're doing through your soul care program. Uh, 
Um, such an honor to have crossed paths with you. Um, I can, I have to give Sean a shout out because yeah. that's how, you know, we've connected is through your husband and Sean's an incredible human who I also consider a hero um, in this world. And so the two of you and you have your amazing daughter that is already just such an incredible young woman who's going to be a game changer in this world. Um, so thank you so much for your time, for coming on to the podcast. I'm sure people are wondering how they can even reach you to discover more about your soul care program and your book that's already out to purchase for folks if they're wanting to go over and purchase it where they can find it. So I'll pass it to you and uh, sharing where people can connect and find your work, Janet. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Adit, so much for having me on the program. Um, uh, yeah. So if folks are looking for uh, my work, um, you can find my books on Amazon. Um, and let's see, the first one is Crushing Soft Rubies. That's the memoir. Um, the second one is Midnight Peaches, Two O'Clock Patience. Uh, that has to do with womanhood and the spirit. Um, and the um, I have a, a, a third, an ebook that is, it focuses on um, the film um, Magic Mike Double XL. Um, and then the last one, uh, the latest one to Black Parents Visiting Earth, Raising Black Children in the 21st Century. Um, and so all of those are available on Amazon. Um, for folks looking uh, who are interested in the Soul Care Power program, they can take a look uh, at my profile on Instagram. They can find me at uh, Janet Stickman on Instagram, and they can always send a, um, uh, they can always DM me on Instagram or just feel free to to follow me and take a look at some of the things I posted as far as our soul care power program. Um, wow. And the next, I'm sorry, the next one uh, starts in January, early January. So oh, um, that's right around the corner. And we're, uh, I'm sure after this year, people are going to want to <laughs> dive into some <laughs> much needed soul care. <laughs> it's right. a great way to start off the year for 2021. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to um, kind of, you know, after this first launch, um, you know, I've been able to see how it's 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 been a way to create a space for um, other folks to find the healing that that I've found, or at least to to begin um, that journey. And I'd I'd love to to keep on doing this, especially at the beginning of the the year. You know, as many folks, uh, you know, often are trying to recommit to certain things, all their new year's resolutions and get back on track. Um, perhaps this is something that, that might be of interest to, to, um, to folks of color, especially if they've known, you know, for, for years that, you know, these issues of, you know, racism related stress, uh, have been, uh, gnawing away at them. Yeah. It's a great investment in your well being and your mental health and, really your life um, and kind of bringing uh, your best life to life, <laughs> and, you know, uh, such an intentional way to start the year. And Janet, what is one thing you're, you know, um, just, you know, channeling all your intuition and uh, you're just so present and uh, so joyful and full of light. And um, what is one thing left on your heart that we haven't talked about yet, or we haven't said yet that you would, I want to leave listeners with as we come to a close. Mm. Um, I say the importance of the importance of of loving yourself, having self love be the uh, point of departure, if you will. You know that whatever it is that we might embark upon, um, that we begin first with self love that you know if we i don't think we can go wrong if we begin in that um that place um uh, sometimes we end up spreading ourselves a little too thin and you know we're we're very generous people when it comes to uh, giving to you know giving to others uh, but then um we either forget our, or our condition to not love ourselves. Uh, we may have been told that that's selfish or that's self-centered when actually it's in, in my opinion, it's quite the opposite. You know, we, we have to love ourselves 
um, you know, in a, in a true and, and, and deep way before we can be fully present and then be fully present to other people. So um, that's what I'd like to leave folks with. Thank you so much, Janet. What a beautiful way to close out the show. Thank you for your time, for your being, for your presence, and for all the gems you've left us with today. Thank you so much, Adit. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much, friends, for tuning into today's episode. If you have some time, please take a moment to subscribe to the episode and take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and to leave a review. The review helps connect to more listeners from around the world to find this episode and find this podcast. So thank you for taking time to leave a review. If you want to dive deeper into your healing journey, go ahead and reach out to me and schedule your free 15 minute consultation. Wherever you are in the world, we can set up a virtual session online and it's confidential and whatever you're experiencing, whether it's a breakdown, a breakup, a life transition, you just need a little bit of accountability, whatever it is, you can reach out to me and we can have either one breakthrough session or we can set up a package plan and set you up with some individual coaching sessions to help you along the way in your healing journey. Reach out to me at hello at aditsi.com. That's hello at aditsi.com. It's also in the show notes. I provide individual therapeutic life healing coaching sessions to women from all over the world through virtual sessions. I also have a virtual therapeutic master course that you can enroll now and start today in the comfort of your own home. It's on my website, aditsi.com. Just click on the service tab and click on virtual masterclass and check it out. You can see a preview of the introduction and get a taste for what the three week course will look like with the entire curriculum that you can view online and see if it's for you. Feel free to email me if you have questions and I cannot wait to see you. Wish you so much joy, so much fun and so much healing in your journey. Thank you friends for being here. Stay safe, stay blessed. Mm -hmm.